Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, this is Carrie Knuth um, with the Ivy Tech Fort Wayne Student Life Office. And today is our very first ever Hot Drinks and Hot Topics event. Um, today we are focusing on mental health in the time of COVID-19. So I'm going to start off by introducing um, our uh, Student Life Assistant, Anna Decker. She um, is actually who put this presentation together. She gathered all the information and did the interviews. Um, so I'm going to let her present on um, on this topic for this afternoon. And uh, thanks for joining us, Anna. Alrighty. So I, uh, yeah, um, Carrie asked me to think of a couple ideas for uh, <clears throat> events that we could do virtually this year. Uh, so one of them was uh, Ivy Tech's Hot Drinks and Hot Topics. And I thought that this could be a little series so to start it off, I thought we'd talk about mental health in the time of COVID uh, as that has been on the rise lately. So I have a video here and we're gonna just start off. This is gonna kick off Hot Drinks and Hot Topics. Welcome to the Warsaw Ivy Tech Hot Drinks and Hot Topics. Today we're gonna start off by making a honey cinnamon almond milk. So first off, you're gonna need some honey. We're also going to need a table. Oh, they're stuck. We're also going to need a tablespoon measure. So you're going to take your honey. Get a nice big spoonful. Make sure you don't want too much though. And then we're just going to dump that right in there and we're going to let that sit. <clears throat> now, you're going to make your almond milk. So you're going to take three cups of almond milk, put it into a small a saucepan, and then also take your cinnamon stick, or in this case I'm using ground cinnamon, and you're going to mix it in to your small saucepan. And thankfully mine was already ready. And after it's been nice and mixed and um, has been heated to where the edges are just bubbling, so you don't want it rolling boil, but you do want it hot enough that you see some steam and a little bit of bubbling on the edges. So you're going to go ahead and dump it right into your mug. There we go. And then our next step is to take another tablespoonful of honey. So I'm just going to stir this a little bit. Make sure I get all that honey off of that spoon. See if you can use it again. Spoonful. And I'm just going to go ahead and give that a good stirring as well. And then at this point, you're going to want to take your vanilla. And we are going to use a half teaspoon, same one that you used for your cinnamon, if you used ground cinnamon. Otherwise, you're just using a whole cinnamon stick. Put that in there. And then we're going to mix it all up again. And then top it off. Well, the nutmeg. I usually just sprinkle a tiny bit on the top, a little bit more than I want to get out. And then again, just give it a real good mix. Make sure you get it all incorporated in there. And now that you've got your drink on me, time to enjoy it. Mm, so good. I hope you enjoy the rest of this video. Alrighty, folks. So, um, <clears throat> I just wanted to kind of give a little background on uh, mental health during COVID. And uh, so right here, these are just a couple of straight statistical quotes that I have taken from um, WebMD, not WebMD, I'm not totally sure. But um, so yeah, so I basically just wanted people to understand that there are over 45 million Americans, just alone Americans, uh, with mental illnesses, and that has actually increased from the uh, from the COVID pandemic. And so, uh, the three biggest ones that people 
struggle with is anxiety, depression, and substance abuse. Uh, so I thought that those ones were kind of interesting. I, um, I figured that anxiety and depression would probably be the biggest, but I didn't think that substance abuse would be right up there with the rest of them. I thought it would be something more like PTSD or uh, other mental illnesses. So um, just because of right now and that we have been on lockdown and so many countries are still on lockdown, uh, it is really hard for people who have these mental illnesses because they don't get the help that they need because they can't leave. Um, and while there is virtual, it, uh, for a lot of people don't, that don't have access to that, it's just basically put them into isolation and um, potential for self-harm because of the fact that their social norms and daily norms have been disrupted. So again, these are just a little bit more of statistics. Um, these are actually supposed to be symptoms and this is how much the percentage of Americans have actually felt these symptoms. <clears throat> so fever being the highest uh, with an 88% and then cough being the second highest with 67% of pe people experiencing that symptom. Um, I also thought that this was interesting because it uh, it lists some of the symptoms that I didn't even think were on there, such as you know the mix of saliva and mucus, or I know that sounds gross. Um, the the joint pain I had heard you know shortness of breath, cough, fever, fatigue, headaches, sore throat, cough, um, all of those. But I stomach pains, but I hadn't heard of you know increase in saliva, um, joint pain, headaches. I didn't think that those kind of correlated with coronavirus, so it was interesting for me to find that out. Um, and then this is talking more about statistical numbers of mental illness in the U.S. alone. So 30 million people have eating disorders, 17.7 .7 million have depression. Um, <clears throat> and the reason I put this on here is because I kind of wanted the numbers to show people be like, you're not alone. Everybody is dealing with this. And unfortunately, in this time, we're dealing with it heavier than we would in the past. Um, and then these are my own breakdowns of percentages. So 49% of Americans above the age of 18 have some sort of mental illness. And then I broke it down by uh, demographics. So about 17% of that is Asian, 40% of that is Hispanic, 39% is African American, excuse me, sorry. And 29% is white. And then I also broke up the percentages by what disorder. So 2.6 is bipolar, 9.5 is depression. 1% uh, is schizophrenia, which I thought was very interesting. And then 18% uh, was anxiety. So there we show that depression and anxiety, which go hand in hand, uh, are the biggest contenders right now for mental illness. Uh, this was breaking it down by gender as well as age group. So I have men, women, children, and then the elderly. Um, they said that the elderly are actually experiencing more depression and anxiety than in years past with what they have seen or dealt with. Uh, due to the fact that they are lonely, they're stuck inside, they can't go outside, because they are a more at risk um, population, so it's become very hard for them to even enjoy their daily lives. <clears throat> so again, this is more information. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit more about what was going on in specifically 2020 alone, uh, just with the COVID pandemic. So um, in June, the World Health Organization did a study on people um, who had existing mental illness and due to um, COVID-19, they actually had increased um, this, their substance use to try to self-medicate themselves in a way. Um, 
And because of that, it, it led to some suicidal ideations and attempts. And then from April to June, people that were su suffering with anxiety and depression uh, said that their symptoms were worse during these months than they had ever been in the past. Um, and so I really just wanted to show people the kind of correlation between COVID and mental health and how because of COVID, we did have a burst of new mental health cases, as well as those who have already had pre-existing mental health conditions, um, also noticed that their symptoms were worsening due to the coronavirus effect. Anna, before we move on, um, I'd like to hear if anybody, um, you know, hear from people, like why, you know, what are some of the reasons that we think and this is also Anna this is the older version of the presentation so I I will um, I'll I'll take it back over because so I can do the updated one um, but so <clears throat> so I mean we've heard of, of anxiety and depression and things like that about the coronavirus but um, you know what what if anybody wants to speak up or drop it in the chat what is anybody else you know feeling um, or you know, what is anybody else thinking about this? What are some feelings that every, you know, people are having that are new that aren't, you know, they weren't introduced during or before COVID, um, you know, beyond fear and fear for our loved ones and things like that. Is there any, any feelings that people are having that are maybe new that <laughs> Jacqueline says gray hair and wrinkles. That's the truth. My disconnection with, um, you know, getting ready because you don't need to do that when you have a mask on. <laughs> Um, you know, what are, what are some other, what are some other things that, um, you know, other than, other than our regular mental illnesses of anxiety and things like that, what, um, you know, what other mental, mental care things are happening right now? I think that's a great question, Carrie. Yeah. I know like me personally, uh, my mom is mid eighties. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the poor thing hasn't been out of her house in close to a year because we're scared to death to sort of like let her go anywhere and, you know, just even taking her, her groceries or, you know, just anything she needs. You just have this fear, like, are you gonna make them sick? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's a, that's a huge fear. Um, I have, you know, I have elderly parents and and I I'm scared to let my kids near them and um and then the uh you know the toll that that takes on my parents as far as you know you're trying to balance making sure that they know that you're trying to keep them safe and also that you still love them <laughs> but you you know you can't love them as much as they want to be loved from afar and it's you know it's it's such a huge balancing act um and then let's see here. So uh, Savannah, or I'm sorry, Anna Mae said relationship issues. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. You know, how do you deal with like having to be with those people all the time <laughs> when you used to be able to like take little breaks and, you know, be away from them uh, and like get that little, uh, you know, that little distance from your family and your, you know, your kids for God's sakes. Um, yeah. I've, I've had my kids home. I've had my kids home and my goodness, it is, um, it's a lot, but you know, I do recommend, you know, we, we aren't, we aren't 100% stuck in home. I usually, you know, I'll take like a 15 minute drive just to get away every day. Um, or, you know, several times a day, I'm usually like the shopper in my family. So, um, so my husband and I will like take our little breaks to get, to get ourselves kind of away and like just listen to music and kind of decompress a little bit. Um, let's see, what else do we have here? Yes, anxiety has spiked with, and sleep disturbance. You guys aren't getting the kind of sleep that you want um, and that you're worrying um, you're worrying that the stress of your residents are declining. Mm -hmm. Well, Robin's even down in the chat um, that they missed the weekly time that they spent uh, with their husband's side of the family. 
just the family time that they had. And I, I even know that because my extended family lives up in Michigan and we've seen them maybe a couple times, whereas normally I'd be up there almost every other weekend. Yeah. Because they live so close. But it's like with, with COVID, Michigan's still in full lockdown. I think just this week they reopened up all their restaurants for indoor dining. And even at that, it's only like 25% dining. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and you know, what about, what about work, you know, work relationships in addition to home, you know, home relationships. Yeah. It's very hard for me that I haven't seen my colleagues in almost a year. That's, you know, um, I'm a very social person at work. And so, you know, um, as you can tell from my job, these kinds of events that we did, we did them weekly. And so I, I had the opportunity to see all my coworkers and friends and students every week um, when we hosted food events and things like that. So, you know, now I just get to see you guys on camera, which is still good, but it's not, um, you know, it's not optimal. I want to be able to like drop by somebody's desk and like see how they're doing and stuff like that. So um, definitely I think relationships and just that loneliness factor and just kind of that, um, you know, that uh, funness that just automatically comes with doing your regular day-to-day things. you know, yeah. that's definitely gone in these times. Um, well, and we're just and, a community, too, of people, you know, we rely on those interactions and that community aspect that we come together and enjoy being around other people and learning from other people. And now that that's all been kind of taken away from us, I think it's yeah. hard. I mean, even for me, who is very much of a hardcore introvert, need my own time, leave me be, please. Um, it's been hard for me because I can't go see my friends or, you know, I'm, I'm just at work and I have to wear a mask. And that's hard for me because I am such a personal person when I am serving my customers that I want to talk to them and engage with them. And with the mask on, it feels very much like I can't do that because half of my words come out muffled. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, great. Well, before we move on, does anybody else want to, you know, share any feelings that they're having, any fears that they're having, any, um, you know, uh, I, I've actually lost, you know, two loved ones during this time, um, you know, not confirmed COVID cases, but you know, that takes a, that takes a huge strain when you can't, um, you know, grieve with your friends and family and things like that in a way that you would normally do that. Um, I've, uh, we've had weddings that had to be canceled and, and those kinds of things. So it's, you know, it's the struggle is real right now and people understand that. (laughs) Um, Does anybody else want to share? All right. So how can Ivy Tech help you? Um, Everyone needs a little help sometimes and Ivy Cares is here to provide that additional support with what we call our academic um, wraparound services. So staff here at Ivy Tech Fort Wayne um, have an Ivy Cares office and they're here to connect you with can, uh, campus and community resources and we focus on three, uh, four areas there including, uh, we include transportation needs, food and security needs, mental health, and emergency funding. Um, our Ivy Cares department is headed up by Chris Douse. Uh, who is our Director of Retention and Engagement. His email address is there and phone number. And uh, for those listening uh, to the recording, I will make sure and drop all of these links uh, in the YouTube uh, description there so that you guys have that information. Um, So those four areas that we were talking about, so emergency funds um, and student emergency fund assistance. So uh, we have a few different funds available to Ivy Tech uh, Community College students um, to help students with any short-term financial emergencies they might have, uh, things related to COVID or just in your personal life. We have some assistance out there that that might be available to you. Uh, You can access that information and that application for additional financial assistance uh, through this link here. And again, I'll link this in the um, in the description of the video for anybody who might need that, but um, but this uh, this this is any kind of emergencies that hinder your ability to complete your academic um, coursework. So it can be a lot of different things, um, and Ivy Tech is here to help you uh, help you with that. Uh, food insecurity. So when we're on campus, we actually have a physical food pantry. Um, but while we're all kind of um, here virtual, we, we're, we're offering some virtual options as well, including um, like virtual e-gift cards, um, you know, to get you some food needs um, to help with any food insecurity. And then we're also doing some uh, e-delivery options. So like, um, you know, 
delivered food to your home. Um, so that's something uh, we're working with Uber to provide transportation um, to students who might need help to and from their classes. And then Ivy Assist there is a um, is kind of a link. We work with Aunt Bertha there to um, to uh, to link to multiple community resources that um, maybe you know maybe Ivy Tech can't specifically offer, but we can link you to those community resources that can help. So um, those are just four of the areas, but the fifth one there we were talking about was mental health. And uh, with our connection with the Bowen Center, uh, we are able to offer the student assistance program. And uh, it's one of the biggest issues facing, facing college students is mental health. And so we've connected with Bowen to offer four free um, counseling services to all of our students. Um, there are more available if needed, um, and you can actually contact Chris Dows if you do need additional sessions beyond those four free sessions. Uh, but initially, we, we are giving out four free sessions of counseling services with Bowen. Um, so uh, understanding your student assistance plan, your SAP, uh, its access to quality mental health is important to your school. We provide a student assistance plan as benefit to students. All you need to do, these are prepaid. There's no copay or pre-authorization required for those four sessions. Um, and all you need to do in order to schedule those or connect with those is call that 1-800 number, the 1-800-342-5653. You want to identify yourself as an Ivy Tech Fort Wayne Warsaw student, uh, provide your information so that they can connect you with your student assistance plan. Um, they may request uh you know, information regarding your insurance. Um, more about that later. That is uh, in the event that you need additional services beyond those first four. Uh, they want to make sure and and um, and guarantee kind of continuity of service with the counselor that you're starting with. But you'll hear more about that later. Um, and uh, you can also schedule an appointment through bowencenter.org. Um, so with the, these counseling services, they're offering on-site and telecounseling options, which is really nice and beneficial in these current times where we're trying to keep socially distanced. Um, telecounseling is also available. Uh, really important thing is that everything that you work out um, with the Bowen Center is private and confidential. They don't share any of your information here with Ivy Tech. So um, you might have an Ivy Tech staff member who might help you set up an appointment, but beyond that, they don't share any uh, information about your treatment or your diagnoses. Um, with the school at all that is kept completely confidential. Um, if you are, once, once again, I mentioned that um, you're automatically given four counseling sessions. Um, you might be able to request additional set, uh, sessions by contacting Chris Dows through that contact information I provided earlier. He may be able to work out some additional sessions for you there. Um, and then they do provide summer coverage and um, uh, even if you're on break and you're not actually attending classes at the time. So right in there at the bottom, you will notice uh, the phone number for our SAP coordinator, Ted, who we'll hear from in just a moment. Um, but his phone number is 1-800-342-5653, extension 3061. And here um, on the next slide, we are going to listen to a presentation and an interview from Anna um, meeting with two of our representatives from Bowen Center, Jessica Winhurst and Ted Westbrook. I'm just going to start off really fast by introducing myself. I'm Anna Decker. I am the Warsaw Campus Student Life Advisor, and with me are Jessica Windhorst. Did I say that correctly? You did. Good job. Ted Westroff. Um, and I'm going to ask them a couple of questions about mental health, and they are from the Bowen Center in Warsaw. So thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just ask one of our first questions, which uh, a lot of students want to know is why they need their insurance for the SAP program, even though we do know that it is free for four sessions. A lot of students are concerned when they see that insurance is needed. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. I, I could probably speak to that, Jessica, and stuff. All the Bowen Center student assistance plans um, are structured each way, like, differently. Uh, the way that Ivy Tech has chosen to do that is actually to uh, allow, you know, students to, you know, experience counseling uh, for Warsaw and um, Ivy Tech Northeast District uh, for those first four sessions completely paid for by the university. And I think that's why it's called a student assistance plan versus a student counseling program. It's because just like an employee assistance, which is a similar program, 
we want to overcome the stigma of reaching out for counseling. After that, if you see the value in it, it's kind of the, it's a, it's one hand reaching, it's a handshake over from the school to either the student or employee, then that now they can invest in it after those sessions, you know, are utilized and stuff. It, it should be noted that um, the reason, another reason is a real practical, anyone that's managed benefits or at some point has realized benefits, the student assistance plan covers any Bowen Center therapist. It's an excellent program. But since after that fourth session, if it continues then, uh, let's say to the student's insurance uh, on that fifth session, we have to make sure that that person you started with is properly covered by your insurance. If we don't know that information on the fifth session, you'd actually might have to switch therapists. And so you wouldn't want that to happen. Um, and that's just the practicalities of anyone who does social work is that we're trying to manage payer sources and clinical outcomes and resources all together. We do that in probably every case we serve, whether it's through a student assistance plan or insurance. So that's something that they'll learn, not just because of the student assistance plan, but anytime they reach out for mental health care, that you've got to align you know, these, the realities of, man, what resources do I have? And then what pay sources do I have? And then if we can thread those together, we have continuity of care so they can stay with that same therapist. Um, it should be noted also that sometimes, um, as Jess is aware and, you know, others is we offer fee assistance. Uh, they can do self-pay. Uh, it's just the world of really working with client services to see what's most cost effective. Uh, for Ivy Tech Northeast, if you find yourself in a situation like I, even with fee assistance, just cannot afford this. I've done my four sessions. It's helpful. I'd like additional sessions. Uh, they can contact Chris Douse and uh, work with him. Uh, he will contact me if additional sessions need to be authorized since I kind of coordinate uh, those programs. And he does from time to time. And we can get additional sessions of coverage. Uh, you know, that would be a discussion between that student. I think that's what, there's a key thing that they need to remember. Uh, we do have a flyer that explains all this. I disseminate that to key contacts at Ivy Tech and hope that it gets out there because uh, it explains a little bit of that process. It has my actually direct number right to my cell phone. Um, so they get that sort of concierge if they have any issues uh, to get a hold of me um, so I can assist them in those types of situations and hopefully maintain that level of privacy and confidentiality. So great, great first question. Yeah, and I actually, I've seen a couple of those flyers on campus. Um, and so it's good to know that that word is out there and we're so happy that, you know, you guys are willing to work with us. Um, our next question is, what are you seeing in like your local region slash state? So I guess kind of in Indiana in general, what are we seeing kind of with the COVID numbers and how that's been relating to, I guess, people new uh, clients that have been coming in, big, more reoccurring appointments from, current clients. So I'll go ahead and let you answer those questions. I mean, I think either one of us can answer this question and it's just um, increase all across the state. Indiana is no exception. Warsaw is no exception. Fort Wayne is no exception to what's going on in our country in general. Mm -hmm. um, so all across the United States, all, all across really the globe at this point, you're seeing a really high tick in, in people and their mental health needs. Um, so that's why um, I just think it's so important that being able to have honest conversations, having access to something like the, student's assist the student assistant program, having access to your employee assistant program, I would even encourage um, the students of Ivy Tech that have um, jobs on top of being a student, because I know most do because you serve such a non-traditional population, is to even further that and, and check with their employer as well, because I guarantee there is something in there for them at their place of work. Yeah, I think um, to, to kind of dovetail what Jessica's saying, so we have uh, student assistance plans with Ivy Tech, uh, with Manchester, with PFW. Uh, through that, we gather a lot of surveys, uh, especially for college-age students. Um, I can tell you the high, high thing that we treat across the board is anxiety. 
Anxiety is a huge issue and social disconnection. Uh, we just do a lot of surveys that either look at diagnosis or look at topics. Sometimes like for instance, uh, the chancellor at PFW said, I, I, beyond diagnosis, I need to understand what kind of topics or issues are they coming for? Mm -hmm. And we see across the board, I can tell her without a doubt that Bone Center traditionally has done a lot of K through 12, but a lot of these programs that we're now doing with colleges, the colleges have pursued us. They've recognized the need. Um, their student health centers are seeing a huge issue of just creating that social connect, a lot of anxiety, especially for first year students. Uh, we see a huge, uh, uh, of a huge volume of uh, first year students in there just managing the transitions. I get asked this a lot, are there concerns about COVID? And I, I honestly, when we look at the, the data of what we've been serving, it's basically just a lot of anxiety and social disconnect. Certainly COVID might exacerbate some of these things, um, but the strange thing is we offer telecounseling, which is, you know, for, if someone prefers safety, uh, convenience, um, and we kind of were ready to, uh, where we do some on-site stuff to be able to pivot to have a half an hour of telecounseling on-site. The students all wanted to come on-site, quite honestly. But telecounseling helped us maintain care over winter and summer breaks because where we thought, uh, where we had these on-site services, is they wouldn't use them because they're not on camp campus. We were actually seeing people even internationally uh, statewide. Um, just fascinating to see our pivot to that. So that's kind of what we're seeing regionally. Um, without a doubt, there has been an explosion of uh, desire for mental health services, which honestly we think is a good thing. Uh, people are speaking openly about it, and so we hope as a natural result, seeking treatment for it. You know, we're not all physically well year-round. Mm -hmm. We may have like to take an aspirin. We may have to go see a doctor. Physical health is not a static state. So either is mental health. You know, there's going to be times you're going to maybe need medicine. You're going to maybe need to see a, a therapist. That is normal. You know, uh, mental health is dynamic. So if we can overcome stigma, I think this is a good thing that we're seeing, quite honestly. I mean, th that is... I'm sorry, Anna, to interrupt. I just, I will say I've never, I've never been a part of a time where it's been this much of a discussion, mm -hmm. which... Yeah. I know I love and I know Ted loves because that means what we are so passionate about and serving those with mental health needs, we can have open, honest conversations and now and other people are recognizing that it's it's so common and not to be embarrassed about it because everyone struggles with things time to time, you know? We're all yeah. I know. It's it's crazy. And I know um, I, even in my own life, have struggled with anxiety and depression, and have been through therapy multitude of times and have been at points in my life where I had to take medicine. And I, it was hard for me at first to accept that and be like, it's, it's okay to be having to take medicine. It's okay that I'm not okay. I'm working on it. And it's yeah. not forever. So. Thank you for sharing your story. I can't tell you when, when leaders tell their story, it's one, they expect Bowen to say Bowen things, but it normalizes this. And I find the students have a hunger to talk about it. That, that our students really are our hope. The way they um, discuss mental health is so much more effective. So when they see their leadership do that as well, it just covers, you know, it creates that uh, where stigma is just stripped away from the whole culture of that school. Well, and it also creates connection for your students. So they know that they can come to you and say, Anna, can you help me? I need to access my student assistant program. And they know without a doubt that you're going to understand and it's not going to be any question. You know, it, it's, it's pretty, thank you for being so vulnerable. It's brave. Uh, yeah, it's definitely, I mean, I still struggle with it sometimes, but I, I'm thankful for what I went through and the help that I sought to get through it and know that I can get through it. Mm -hmm. um, with that being said, I'm going to move on to the next question. And uh, what can we do for ourselves as kind of a self-help? Hey, Ted, uh, do you want to do your 
I mean, Ted is, Ted, I don't, he's, he's modest. So Ted has been at Bowen for many years and has actually had many roles here. And one of the things he's, he's excellent in, and that is DVD. You gotta, you gotta <laughs> well, Jess, well, Jess, I, you know, I, 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 the beauty is being able to just hit the nail on the head. We're able to have these discussions now. I've been, I've, I've been with the Bones there since 94, so it's 26 years, but only within the last three to five years have we been able to actually be invited to like a wellness fair to do a PHQ-9 depression screening. That's the blood pressure check of mental health. No one seems concerned if they have to get their blood pressure taken, but to say, hey, you know, let's do a depression screening. When I've gone the second year at a company where we now do that, it's the second year already, it's a normal thing. Oh, I gotta do my depression screening. And it's so awesome to hear that. I want them to talk about their depression screening the way they do about a blood pressure check. It's really total wellness. I think if you look at what people can do now, they really need to think about, and I always like, let's, let's be honest about what we can accomplish right here today is rethink how they view self-care mental wellness. The number one thing I start with all the, I work with a lot of educators and I'm talking to them. Um, I guarantee during COVID, you have learned social distancing, wear a mask, six feet, uh, avoid large crowds. Tell me your four key mental health things you're supposed to be doing during COVID. And it's just, uh, I don't know. <laughs> it's like, that shows the stigma. There's no doubt COVID has had a mental health impact. We know statistically already that's happened. The election and just the stress we experience that has a mental health impact. All this year of uncertainty and change with no, no end date. I said, at an early age, you were taught, brush your teeth. You didn't come out just knowing how to do physical self-care. Bathe yourself, comb your hair, wash your clothes. Let's think about that. Who taught us that? Our parents, if not our parents, someone who cared about us, a friend. And we got hammered about it until guess what? It just became a part of our daily, weekly, monthly self-care. And then I asked people, so what point did your parents ever say to you, okay, we're gonna talk about why you experience an emotion today. So you can understand what it communicates, validates, and what it motivates you. There's nothing there. We have a complete void. So we haven't been taught daily, weekly, monthly, yearly routines of emotional self-care that we should be doing. So I'm out there teaching a lot of teachers, a lot of workplace educators about doing a digital detox, about understanding how to transition from work to home, understanding the brain science of stress. But there are things that we're teaching them to do daily, weekly, monthly, yearly. My wife's a nurse, um, LBGYN. I tease all the time because I was like, there's things that people go, you know, to meet with her to do yearly. To do that. And I was like, I go, we don't talk about this. But I go, the nice thing is it would not be abnormal for people to say, oh, I got to go do this yearly thing or this monthly thing, get my mammogram, whatever the might, case might be. Why are we not saying the same thing? Like I have, I have a, a, a police department where their officers get a mental health assessment yearly. The first year it was odd. The second year, they're like, I gotta go in for my assessment. It became normal so quickly because we made it a priority. So mm -hmm. I'm telling you, if there's anything that people can do for self-care right now is be asking themselves, let's at least turn the fork in the road. What are you doing daily for your mental self-care? Uh, you know, we couldn't begin to teach these now. Are you self-soothing? Are you distracting? Are you improving the moment? What are you doing for distress tolerance? What are you doing to focus on effectiveness? These are mental health skills. This is why people get in treatment because mm -hmm. there's such a void that they weren't taught. And they can now, when they have, let's say, anxiety, distress, they know, oh, I use distress tolerance, and here's my eight sets of skills. So that distress actually brings into their life skillful behavior. Because I guarantee at these colleges, you are learning art, literature, uh, you're reading things that people wrote, not because they were all were born with $2 billion, but because they went through a huge amount of distress and they created beautiful art, wrote books, changed the world. This is what distress could do for us with mental self-care. So I'd, I'd love, Anna, to say, you know, here's what you need to do, but if we can at least get students to start saying, I need to start thinking that way. I need to start being intentional about my mental self-care and daily, weekly. Because if we went back to that physical self-care and let's say you did all those things, but you didn't brush your teeth it all falls apart. 
or let's say you did everything, but you didn't bathe. So we can't even miss one part of our physical self-care. We'll probably start to see some degradation in our functioning. I'm amazed sometimes how long people have gotten without any intentional skills being taught or this. You're going to wipe off that, you know, frown, stop crying before we go into that restaurant or church or whatever the case might be. The lessons they have been taught are don't worry about what you're feeling. It's more important how you look. And that is the key issue when we overcome stigma is people feel like they can be honest again. They can be real to who they are. And then they can start the work that you talked about. And they don't realize then that that distress, that mental anxiety actually was, you know, what caught was the catalyst for probably some of the greatest change in their life. That's what frustrates me when people don't seek treatment because I know then they're gutting it through or they're doing emotional goat keep, gatekeeping. They're just, you know, trying to keep up an image while they just, you know, continue to get worse. Um, and that has its own set of consequences. Consequences can be positive or negative. Um, so that's what we're here today to talk about, and try to convince people. Um, we totally understand why they're struggling. Why wouldn't they be given uh, the stigma we're talking about? But then we are part of that solution. Uh, colleges that value mental health and create, you know, uh, uh, environments where they can be open about it are part of that solution. And then these people with their secret struggles reaching out for help, that's the biggest part of the solution. So thanks for that. I love, like Jess says, I don't mind uh, talking about because I think for probably 24 years have been begging for people just to take notice. Tell me this, what I said is not true. And then think if we just start to reframe how we look at something, how we might act differently all along the spectrum, those needing help, those in leader positions to provide help, um, and us as, you know, community mental health providers to get out there in the community where we need to be, which is where we are now to be preaching this, quite honestly. <laughs> so, yeah. so, great questions. Boy, whoever wrote these are, I love them. <laughs> I took a little time about these and had some help from Nick as well so okay he's pretty great so. all right there you go yep have to give off props where props are due <laughs> oh well, thank you take all the credit, Anna take all the credit <laughs> well thank you so much Ted and Jess um is there anything else you want to leave some passing wisdom or anything like that before I let you go no I just want to say thank you to you Anna for having us um and I love Ivy Tech. That's where I got my human services degree, right from the Warsaw campus, which allowed me to come here and fulfill my life's passion. And that is to provide connection and hope for others. Um, and so I'm just happy that I could be here today. And I love doing what I do. And I feel like it's a privilege that I've been put in the place where I can help others every day. Yeah, I think for me, it's just if someone's struggling, it's understanding, you know, if they're not sure how to make that call to reach out to a trusted person within the Ivy Tech team, myself, Jess, any of us are willing to help. Um, but then it's not just that. If they know someone else is struggling, sometimes they are stuck in that decision making where they've considered treatment for many years. We call that ambivalence, you know, that decision making process. Anything you can do to get them into the action stage to make that call to get online to www.bonecenter.org and click on set an appointment. I mean, if you can get them into the action stage, I'm stunned how oftentimes people will follow through once they make a commitment. So if it's reaching out for yourself or prompting someone else to get help, because I know uh, that there are people that may tune into this that know of someone, if not themselves. Um, they know that person's secret struggle. They know maybe how long they've been fighting it. And if they can prompt them, I mean, prepaid counseling is a wonderful benefit that did not exist. I would have loved to have had it when I was in school. Uh, <laughs> not sound too old. <laughs> but um, it's amazing to see these colleges step forward. So yeah, I did teach a little at Ivy Tech there. I did some criminal justice and some human services. So I appreciate Alan uh, and the team. That was absolutely wonderful experience, both online on site there at the Warsaw campus. So uh, we have a, a, not just a, you know, kind of contract relationship. It really, like Justice says, student, me as a, you know, a adjunct, a real connection to help those students. I'm glad to assist any way we can. Thank you. Thank you. And we are so blessed as Ivy Tech to get to have you guys to help us with our 
students, with our staff, with our faculty, with everybody that's a part of Ivy Tech. So we're just really thankful to you and thank you for your time. Right. Thanks, Anna. Thank you. All right, great. Well, um, Ted there at Bowen, he gave us some, um, some good examples of of how of things that we can do personally you know obviously he suggested um to seek counseling when needed uh, but some things that we can do for ourselves um to keep our mental health healthy um so i just want to talk really quickly about uh you know any ideas that any of us have on how to keep up our mental health um so uh in our live session earlier um we had a lot of great interaction with our students and um uh, unfortunately, that information was lost uh, for the recording, but we uh, we did actually um, get some of that text documentation down. So I just want to mention what we discussed. But uh, Savannah here uh, mentioned uh, affirmations are a positive statement that make uh, that you make to yourself that can help you challenge and overcome self sabotaging and negative thoughts. Uh, they work to break down the lies that society and your upbringing would have you believe um, of yourself and uh, uh, things like, you know, we're not good enough, we're not strong enough, we can't handle it. Um, but when you repeat those positive affirmations, it combats those negative thoughts and that self uh, enemy behavior so that you can start to make positive changes. So that was a really, really re rewarding thought. Um, that is definitely something um, that I think we all struggle with is us being our own worst enemy and us uh, being our biggest critic. And so um, replacing some of those negative thoughts about ourselves with positive affirmations um, will definitely uh, benefit in, in building up our self-esteem and our um, self-respect and our self, um, you know, mental health there. So um, one of our other students mentioned that uh, a big help for their mental health during this time um, was their ability to connect with friends um, through our Ivy Tech student organizations. Uh, namely, the Moms Club was mentioned, um, and our Moms Club is a group of ladies who um, who just connect on their, you know, their uh, their connection on being moms and the different struggles that they have at home and stuff like that. Um, uh, but we also have a lot of student organizations here on campus. Um, uh, all kinds of different ways to connect um, you to students who are like-minded, who have the same struggles as you do, um, and uh, and who can connect you to mentors and peers that uh, can help you both mentally and academically and just kind of keep you motivated and, uh, you know, help you through things. So I definitely wanted to mention that, that if you're interested in connecting with other individuals, um, just to help you get through all of this, uh, you might check out our student organizations. You can find that information on Ivy Life um, uh, from your My Ivy tab, clicking on the Ivy Life button and uh, selecting organizations and filtering out the Fort Wayne uh, campus organizations. And you can also uh, check out organizations throughout the state because uh, since we're all meeting virtually, you're definitely welcome to check out organizations from other campuses and you may be able to meet with them um, and participate in their meetings as well. So that's an opportunity for you. Lots of ways to connect on campus. Um, so yeah, so a few of the other things that we talked about on how to manage your own mental health um, is, we're, we're, you know, we just take a look at hormones, right? Um, our bodies produce hormones when we're happy um, and our bodies produce hormones when we're stressed. And so really talking about how to balance those, um, you know, how to, how to bring out those happiness hormones and how to minimize those uh, stressful hormones and um, namely when we're talking about our happiness hormones we're talking about four main ones serotonin endorphins dopamine and oxytocin um, so just talking about those uh, a little bit here um, endorphins uh, it, it, most of us know those uh, come out in exercise dopamine um, is released when you feel a sense of accomplishment uh, or appreciation for a job well done and oxytocin is your social, um, you know, your social interactive hormone. So those are released with uh, social interaction, social touch, um, those kinds of things. So obviously those kinds of interactions with our, uh, you know, our, our home, um, home mates, our housemates, um, people who are in our inner circle during this time um, are going to be detrimental. Um, but other ways to raise things like serotonin and endorphins and dopamine, exercise, um, sunlight uh, releases serotonin, 
uh, eating different foods. One of our students pointed out that 95% of gut bacteria produces 95% of serotonin. Um, so you should always eat foods that you enjoy. So, um, and that that can help uh, increase your mood. Things like massage increase your mood and in increase your happiness hormones. Um, and then you can also do some self, um, you know, mood induction, things like, you know, remembering fun things, watching uh, videos of things that you enjoy, all of those things reduce happiness or uh, improve happiness hormones. Um, and then uh, other mood enhancers calming that produce calming effects um, that can diminish some of those bad stress hormones, uh, namely cortisol, uh, is, uh, is pr introducing mood enhancers. Um, uh, stress reducers. So things like aromatherapy, essential oils, um, you know, smelling a candle that you enjoy, music therapy, sound therapy, petting a dog. Basically it's finding anything that provides you comfort and just continually doing those things to reduce those levels of stress. Um, you can also, uh, learn new skills, do things that you enjoy, uh, come check out some of our regular activities that we have here. Um, so last week we, uh, introduced, a painting event where we sent you, uh, we sent to your homes paint supplies, and uh, we off we offered instruction on painting our mascot Titan. Um, so these are all things that maybe you've never done before, and they just kind of get you outside of your head and um, get you doing something new, especially with your hands. Um, we've done a few of those activities this semester. Uh, we're also starting this semester. We're in introducing um, a crime solving. Um, series where every month we're going to get a new detective uh, box and we're going to work together in teams to solve the mystery um, each month. So uh, so check us out for those and, uh, and for any other mindful events that we might have coming up. So um, with that, I just want to say thank you for joining us today. Um, I know uh, many of you are watching this on the recording and in order to show us that you have been here today, we do need to track your participation. Um, and to do that, all I need you to do is type in a link. I'm going to share my screen. Okay, so on the screen here, you will see a link. Uh, the link will, um, if you type that link into your web browser, the link.ivytech.edu backslash hot drinks, um, that, is autom that is a link that puts you automatically um, to say that you've participated and watched the video today. So you just type that in, that'll take you to Ivy Life with a little note across the bottom of the screen that says your participation has been recorded, and that's all you need to do. So um, alternatively, you can um, use this QR code rather than typing in the link. Uh, you can use your mobile device and snap a picture of the QR code to link you to the same exact website. Uh, which is going to link you to Ivy Life, give you a note at the bottom of the screen that says that your participation has been recorded. Um, so uh, those two things need to be done in order for you to, um, to be uh, counted as participating if you're watching this on the video. And, uh, and we're tracking the participation for the next two weeks. So until, um, until the 17th of February. So as long as you track your, you watch this video, you track your participation until February 17th, um, then we are going to give you that participation prize, which is a $10 gift certificate to Starbucks. So make sure if you're watching this video to check, uh, to follow these steps to log your participation so I can make sure and send out your prizes. Um, other than that, uh, if, uh, as you know, most of our events are recorded. You can always check out our previous events on our um, YouTube site, which is uh, link.ivytech.edu backslash Titan tube. That's where all of our previous events are located. You can always check those out. We might still have some that we are tracking participation and giving out prizes for. And, uh, and we do something every week. So make sure and check out all of your events on Ivy Life. So thanks for joining us. We hope to see you again soon.